Gracefully and Frankly is grateful to you and Sierra Sil, the all-natural Canadian-owned anti-inflammatory you take daily, and has a guarantee you'll feel a difference within 14 days or your money back, just as it did for GNF listener and happy tennis player Debbie Woods, who's now telling all her friends it helped with her joint pain, and wrote to the Sierra Sil website to share the good news. SierraSill.com. Sierra, the same spelling as the mountains, and Sill, S-I-L, dot com. And you'll get 10% off your order by using the code GF. Another milestone, Ms. Lisa, 70 today. I'm Erin Davis. And I'm Lisa Brandt. We're not 70, the podcast is. Yes, indeed. Gracefully and frankly, we've got so much to unpack and pack in today's episode. So your packing will be a little bit lighter because of some sales, some good, some bad, some ghosting. The gamut was run as you were downsizing on the weekend. Yes, indeed. And it continues. And by the way, declutterfordiabetes.ca is starting the weekend. You can drop your stuff off every weekend. So check out their website. I'm giving diabetes a free plug here because why not? They're good people. But oh my gosh, yes, we're going to tell you all about that. How Lisa is so desperately thirsty to meet firefighters that <laughs> But uh, let's just say she was touching what she shouldn't have been. And we'll leave it at that and tell you all about it. Speaking of touching, the painful touch that's not as painful anymore. But where do you make your confessions to people, to strangers? For Aaron, it's when you're getting a mammogram. Yep, they squeeze just about everything out of you. <laughs> and we'll share that with you as well as the perspective on you never know who you're sitting next to. It's an amazing story. We've got a lot of amazing stories in this episode. And if you want to read another really incredible story, look into the origins of Kathy and Kim at Envy Pillow, from the Dragon's Den appearance to turning down financing because they had so much faith in themselves and with good reason. Because they have a product that no one else can match. There are a lot of pillows out there, but there aren't a lot of pillows that not only do what Envy pillow does, but are sustainable, Canadian made, and so many other good things. Talk about testimonials and people who are getting a better night's sleep and getting rid of the wrinkles from smooshing their faces by using the Envy pillow. Did I mention it's made in Canada? Yep. You did. We're so proud of that, and so are they. Go to envypillow.com, E-N-V-Y pillow.com, and get 10% off using the code GF. God, it's so good just to sit down with you and take a breath and have my coffee and good morning and good evening wherever you're listening and whatever you're doing, if we're on your walk or whatever. It's so good to get feedback from people who enjoy spending time with us because we enjoy spending time with each other. Dirty secret. (laughs) Absolutely true. I look forward to this high point of my week. Good. We both need better lives, but... (laughs) (laughs) Oh, my gosh. So things have been busy, busy, busy. As I told you last week, there was going to be a yard sale. But then, Lisa, I discovered a new addiction, and that is selling things on Facebook Marketplace. Oh, Isn't it wonderful? You get instant gratification almost, instant response. Yeah. So how's it been going? Well, good things and not so good things. Good things like Brooke and Phil had a crib to which they had lost the bolts, and it was going to go to the dump. And we said, no, 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 no. Somebody just needs bolts. So the last night, a guy pulls up to the driveway. He had messaged me. And Lisa, I am at the point now with free stuff. I'm asking people to give me a deposit if they're coming for the free stuff and I will hand them the cash at the door. I'm so tired of people ghosting me, but especially for free stuff. And that's what everybody's saying. Because I posted about another incident that I'll tell you about in a sec and the nightmares that have ensued. And a lot of people said, yeah, it's worst with the free stuff, because if you don't assign it a value, guess what? Neither do they. Mm. I never had trouble getting rid of free stuff, but I'm trying to think. I'm pretty sure I did that on Kijiji, because on Facebook, at least you can follow up with people and make them feel bad for a minute and go, where are you? Or whatever, right? Yeah. 
Well, there was this one woman. We have two bicycles for sale because we got e-bikes. So we wanted to sell these bikes as a pair. Didn't work out that way because it turns out that my niece wants it. So the other one we're selling, and this woman said, yes, I'd like it, but I can't come and get it. So we said, okay, we'll deliver it. It was going to be about a 30-minute drive. Rob takes the front wheel off the bicycle, puts it in the car, and then nothing. So I wrote to her and I said, Rebecca, we're here. We've got your bicycle and we've taken it apart. We're ready to deliver it. And she said, can I send an e-transfer? Now, this is something else that I have to be corrected on, Lisa. Mm. And I said, we'd prefer cash and then crickets. Nothing. Not a, oh, I can't do it or sorry, this won't work. Nothing. Hmm. And the car was loaded with this bicycle. So there's a lesson in there. Unfortunately, you just can't trust everybody, and we're trusting people, you and I. Why not take an e-transfer? What was the, what was the reasoning for that? Well, because we're up on scams and all that kind of thing. You read oh. about people who sold a baby grand piano, took the 50000 and then the transaction was canceled. But then Rob reminded me later that was mostly with trust companies. And so now we've come around. We will take e-transfers. And this blessed dresser that somebody was going to come and get, and we were stood up for that as well. And then there's this other woman, and she is dickering like crazy. We've got a beautiful chair and love seat in the apartment downstairs, very gently used. Brand new, the chair is $500. But no, I... Posted them both for 180 and she said, I'll give you 120 And I said, I can't do that. I yeah. can't. Yeah. So we got her up to 150 I think, and sold her a painting and a wooden plant table. But my goodness, it's a real education, the whole thing. You just have to be patient and understand that some people are just going to stand you up. And they are what I have coined pass holes because they get you all interested. They've got you. You got them. And then they just disappear into the ether. It's quite something. And you have to stand firm sometimes, too, right? We sold a projector and the big screen that went with it, and we knew we were giving an amazing deal on it. I did make a mistake, though, but we still had people try and lowball us. My mistake was setting the price exactly at what I wanted. I should have set it just higher enough so that if somebody wanted to knock 50 or 100 bucks off, they would feel like they got a deal. I would not lose anything, right? I should have played the game a little better, but we ended up selling it for what we wanted for it anyway. Then there's the whole yard sale mentality. Now, we were so blessed last Saturday because our neighborhood is allowed one yard sale a year. And so a lot of people were taking part and we put up signs at the corner saying big deals here and all this kind of stuff. And it was a combination of our stuff and Brooke and Phil's stuff because, as you heard here last week, we hope, Uh, they're moving back to Ottawa, so they're clearing out a lot they don't want to move. And then you put all this stuff out, and people want to pay half of what it's listed for. And it's like this beautiful, huge Ken Burns book about baseball. And this thing must have cost us $70. And I've got it priced for 10 And a guy said, I'll give you 5 And I said, that hurts my heart. I'll take it for 8 So he did. He took it for 8 But I had dresses hanging in a tree. None of them moved. One woman wanted a designer name that I was selling for 30 She wanted to give me 15 or something. So to heck with that. It'll either go to declutterfordiabetes.ca or I'll get someone braver than I to take it to a consignment store. I can't stand to see these labels going for $10. And they've been worn. You know my life, Lisa. They've been worn like once or twice to MC something and you don't yeah. dare show up in the same dress twice because people actually are noticing what you're wearing if it's any good. Yeah, the whole selling stuff. If you ever scroll through the listings for anything you're looking for, you know that some people think that they should get almost the original price for something they've had for 15 years that has a dent in it. Mm-hmm. And it runs the whole gamut. And so you're really dealing with the whole gamut of people. And their expectations just can't be figured out on a mass basis. Everybody's got their own individual ideas of what something should cost or is worth. Or I went to the Christian bookstore and got this for three bucks. So everything should be three bucks or whatever, you know. Yeah, well, then go ahead and go back and try and find it there. But we did have a really nice experience with a couple from Ontario, Don and Petra, 
who were listeners back in the day. And I noticed he was from Toronto because his phone number was a 416 and they spend part of the year here and part of the year back in Wasaga Beach. They came over and bought the reclining couch that we have. It's a set of two recliners and a reclining couch. And we're not going to use the couch in the new place. And they sat in it. And we had a really nice, about an hour-long visit. That was a positive experience. Having a little girl run into the house into this little fairy tent that we were selling and just loved it on sight and seeing the smile on her dad's face. That was very positive. Nice. So there were some good things. I gave away all my beads. I used to do beaded jewelry. Oh, I remember. Yeah, that was in the time when I didn't have a job back in 03, 04, and I kind of did that for my mental health. I just said, I want this to go to an adolescent who wants to start something new or explore their culture. And it went to a teenager messaged me, and she said, my mom's going to come and get it. She's on her way. And so sure enough, mom came and got all the beads and I hope that they're enjoying it. Nice. It's a real slice of life, isn't it? It, it, Buying and selling. It is. And luckily, you don't have to depend on it to live. Because when people go store, the only good thing about somebody trying to send you uh, an e-transfer ahead of time is they've got some skin in the game to come and pick it up later mm-hmm. on. And then when you you can legitimately turn people away for a while. But yeah, it's a tough one. So maybe explain why you're getting rid of everything you own. Oh, that. Yeah. Yeah, that. Okay. Well, when Phil and Brooke told us they were moving back to Ottawa, we looked around this beautiful house of ours with a view that we will never, ever find anywhere else. We just won't. I mean, as you know, it's from one end of the house, you're overlooking Victoria International Airport, and you can see ferries, and you can see cruise ships. Not at the airport. They're on the water. But you can see all of this going by on the water and the the naval ships and stuff and the freighters. And then there's mountains over in Washington State. We look at Mount Baker every day that there's some clear skies and islands and boaters and every Sunday sailboat regattas. So, yeah, the view here is just beyond. But it was what was inside the house that became painful two bedrooms and a spare bedroom all allocated to the kids, one for each kid and then their playroom. Mm. And we just thought not to minimize a bereaved parent's experience. But in a way, it's like when a child dies and you are in that space, you've got that place, you've got those rooms or that room where that child grew up or had their life. And we just, we couldn't anymore. We didn't want to sit in the sadness And it's so much a replay, Lisa, of back in 2016 when we pulled up stakes on our condo and our cottage and just sort of put it all in a truck. Too much of it, should have left a lot of it behind, and moved it over the mountains here to British Columbia. So that's what we're doing. We're selling the house. God help me. We haven't even had a photographer in because we've still got so much stuff. We've rented a storage unit, so Rob is taking carloads every day of just things that will eventually go into the new place. Yes, the new place. That's the next thing. Yeah. (laughs) We're not leaving this place without somewhere else to go. Right. (laughs) We've purchased a three-bedroom condo on the top floor right on the shores in downtown Sydney by the sea. And it's all windows. We overlook a yacht club. It's not really a club because there's no real social aspect to it. And we're not boat people anyway. But it's right in downtown Sydney, which is walkable, shoppable, lovable, cyclable, and just so friendly. And we've always thought we wanted to end up in Sydney. We just never thought it would be yet. Right. Right. So are you excited about it or are you still daunted by everything you have to do right now? (laughs) Perfectly. You put it perfectly, Lisa. It's a combination of the two. Like as I sit here in my studio, it was a wine room when we moved into this house. So we've taken out the fridge and the racks and we put up all of this egg carton kind of padding in it. And so now we have to take this stuff off the walls and make it into a wine room again. It's the little things as well as the big things. And we're selling furniture, and some of it is allocated to my two nieces who are moving to Victoria from Kelowna. And it's just like, it's just a mind 
blast because it's a puzzle, and Rob's really good with puzzles. Mm. Me, I tend to get overwhelmed, and I just want to stay in bed until noon and then go, oh, I've got a podcast to record or produce. <laughs> yeah, he is. Uh, he, he's one of a kind, that's for sure. Mm. So that's what's going on. Yeah, and we take possession of the condo one month today. And as I say, haven't even listed the house. So, hey, cart, the horse is back there. You know, I've done this in completely the wrong order. So this is why you're getting rid of so many things. But I have to ask Mm -hmm. about the beautiful dining table that has an interesting history. Are you keeping that or did you sell it or what'd you do with it? Oh, that's a good question. We had it downstairs for the tenant in our apartment to use as a desk for her computer and all the work that she did. It is a beautiful, I think, walnut table. And what's unique about it is it's very narrow. We needed it for a house in which the dining room, kitchen, living room, open concept. The dining room was very much an afterthought. So Mm. we needed something that would fit in that space without taking over the whole area. And the thing about this table, Lisa, is that it has flaps that fold down on each side lengthwise. So it's most unique in that way. And we bought it from an antique store, I think, on Bayview or Mount Pleasant in Toronto. I'm not sure which. And it served us so well. We love this table. And I had a woman who came last week, and she really wanted it. A lot of people did because I priced it at $200. It was a steal. Oh, wow. Yeah. Everything's just, you know, bargain basement prices. And <laughs> she came by. She said, oh, this this is beautiful. Oh, I want this. I'm homeschooling my grandson, and this is just perfect. I didn't want something ugly to take over the house. And she was really funky. She had on cool glasses. She had kinky gray hair. She was just totally cool. So when we had the sale in our hand, not quite the money, but the sale, I said, can I tell you a really neat story about this table? And she said, sure. And I said, We were told, anecdotally, that it used to be a coroner's table. Yeah, a coroner's table. So I said, if you cook like me, it won't be the worst thing that this table's ever seen. Let's put it that way. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) No. (laughs) Did she laugh? Oh, she did. She did. She said, actually, I'm a very good cook. And I thought, oh, of course you are. (laughs) And then to watch her put this thing in her Toyota Matrix, it's amazing what people can do if you can just fold down the seats. And I don't mean the stuff we used to do when you folded down the seats, but it's just (laughs) incredible the the furniture that can fit into people's cars that you think, no, that'll never go. But it does, and it did. Now, you're not a Catholic. You weren't raised that way. But you probably know something about the confessional, right? You go in and either you face the priest or there's a screen and you say, forgive me, Father, for I have sinned. It's been, oh, how many years do we have now since my last confession? (laughs) I watched The Sopranos. I know what it's about. Yeah. Right, Carmela and the priest. Oh, and she threw that tray of zitty in the garbage and I'm still not over it. (laughs) Okay. Um, (laughs) But where do you find yourself in the confessional? that most people wouldn't think is a place where we spill our guts, tell our stories. I think mine are pretty typical. I do it at the hairdresser or when I'm having a massage or a facial or something like that. It's one of those intimate things, you know, and it's usually another woman. Yeah. So it's not really anything special when it comes to me. What about you? Oh, I'm a terminal sharer. (laughs) And I don't share about our loss because that just makes everybody feel awkward and bad. But I found this last week. I was going for my biannual mammogram, and there's something that happens where you feel such a kindred spirit with women who are sitting there in these loosely wrapped cloth robes, you know, tied at the front, your little basket of, of your possessions next to you, waiting to go in and get the girl smooshed. Which I should say off the top is not nearly as painful as it used to be. They have changed this in so many ways, at least I have found. Have you? Well, I still find it kind of painful, but it's almost a good pain because it's like I'm doing this for my health because I want to live. So I never begrudge it. Yeah, the young woman doing it for me named Maddie, she kept apologizing and I said, don't worry about it. And I know in my case that a lot of the 
strange angles and stuff she had to take are because of my stupidity. What I have shared here before, see, terminal oversharing, <sighs> is having breast implants, having them submuscular, like under the wall of muscle in your chest, so that it wouldn't interfere right. with my mammograms. Right. And I told her, though, that because there were troubles with Lefty, that uh, he had to try a different kind and a different kind, and it was just a disaster. So there's a lot of scar tissue that can appear to be lumps or masses or whatever. So I told her that. I said, don't you worry. It's my stupidity. But out in the waiting room, it's like I'm filming on a hidden camera some sort of a stand-up night at the local club. I sit down and I just start blathering what I hope is funny stuff. It's nerves, isn't it? I think so. Yeah. But I also, there's something in me that wants to put them at ease. Ah. Uh. And one of the women told me that she said, well, I'm over 70, so I'm not going to be getting any implants anytime soon. And she said, and I'm just waiting now for my results because they will come back and say, I need to take more pictures or here's what's going on. And she went in, came back out and said, well, I'm two years clear. And it was like, oh, yeah, thank God you had cancer and now it's been removed and you're fine. Now, I don't know about the other woman sitting next to us. She was called back into the room and was still in there when I went in. And uh, I ended up having to go in for a second round of shots of photos, but not on old troublesome lefty. It's on the right one this time. Mm. And she asked me, she said, you've lost a lot of weight, haven't you? And I said, I was going to say, well, thanks for noticing. But I said, yeah, I have. And then she said, are you on hormones? And I said, yes, I am which is something else I'm going to have to get taken care of. I'm going to pay someone to balance my hormones because you can't get in with a gynecologist unless you're presenting a real problem. I'll tell you, I've had a biopsy done on one of the girls before. I almost always get sent for an ultrasound after a mammogram, and they've never found anything wrong. You know, I love that they are so picky and careful. If they see anything at all, they just want to make absolutely sure that they rule it out. And that's basically what they're doing. But you make a great point about the other women in the room waiting, you have no idea. We have no idea where they are in a cancer journey, if they are if they have it, if they had it. It's really the whole spectrum of what could be going on. And I just sit there and count my lucky stars. But I understand the pattern, too. I've seen other women. I'm always afraid I'm going to say the wrong thing and upset somebody or something. So I just sit there and bite my lip. I want to be funny. Yeah. <laughs> I always do say the wrong thing. It, oh. It's just kind of the way I go. But, you know, I always figure, well, this foot and mouth disease will come up on the podcast for sure. <laughs> but yeah, and, and probably some women would just rather sit in silence. I haven't ever had somebody put their AirPods in. <laughs> but, God, we're lucky. But you always have to keep an eye on the hormone thing because I've been on hormone replacement for over 10 years. And yeah. that's kind of a little bit of a finish line for a lot of people. And if you haven't had children, quite often um, you will be prescribed progesterone because that will help prevent breast cancer, the progesterone being something your body produces when you have children. So I'm always on the lookout for my older sister who did not. Right. In my case, where I have a family history of cancer, I was only allowed to be on for five years because that's when the risk starts coming up. Mm -hmm. So I had those five years of hot flashes and all that other joyful stuff um, before I finally got through it. So it's a little different for everyone. And if and taking red clover, for example, people think, oh, I can't take estrogen, but I can take red clover. No, ma'am. Red clover is a plant form of estrogen. Mm. Um, so you got to be careful with all that kind of stuff, depending on what you believe and who you talk to. Right. This is the information I got and I'm going with, right? Yes. And check your sources. Yeah. Because somebody who's always on Instagram or TikTok or something because they think they know better may not be the person you should be paying attention to. We're not the people you should be paying attention to. Absolutely not. Talk to your doctor. We are not doctors. We just play them on the podcast. Right, 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 right. And soy milk, estrogen in yep. soy milk, too. That's a very important thing to remember. Look into it. Yep, tofu. Toy yes, and your tofu as well. <laughs> Whatever you do, don't play with tofu. <laughs> hey, stop trying to make it fun. <laughs> Tomorrow. 
I've got a conversation stopper for you. Go on. When I was at the dermatologist office this week, I accidentally set off the fire alarm. What? They have those fire alarm things that you pull right next to. And I'm not saying near. I'm not saying in the vicinity. It is right next to the handle for the door. Oh, no. Yeah, I pulled it by mistake. And it was like 45 minutes of blaring alarm through the whole building. Firefighters couldn't find us. Oh. It just went on and on. I mean, the things I will do to meet firefighters, it's just... It's a little transparent. It's getting out of control. It is. Well, yeah. <laughs> Wait a second. What did this thing look like? I mean, when many of us picture fire alarms, we remember the ones from school that were red and had a little glass bar. What did this look like? Nothing glass or plexiglass over it. It looked exactly like that, but it was open and right next to the door. I'll put a picture on our Gracefully and Frankly Facebook page. You will not believe that an alarm company thought, yeah, this is perfect. Oh, God. It's unbelievable. I was so embarrassed, and they all promised they'd never forget me. And everybody made me feel okay about it. But, you know, there comes a point when it's not funny anymore. Like, it just went on and on. And I didn't want to leave because I didn't want them to have to explain it without me there since I'm the fool who did it. But anyway, yeah, so that was my day. Oh, I am so sorry. Now, were there other businesses (laughs) in that building? Is this the little one just down by the water in in Port Stanley? Oh, Lisa. Yes, it is. Yes, other businesses and about, oh, eight or ten condos. Yeah. Oh, shoot. All these people are out going, where's the fire? Where's the fire? And I'm having to say, no, it was pulled accidentally. And, of course, they go, well, who would do that? And I say, well, it was me. And then they're very kind. So, yeah. Oh. Good times. Poor you. What a way to start the day. It's supposed to be somewhat of a relaxing experience. When are you going to show up there again? When are you going to show your face? Oh, I'll go again. They said that I'm welcome back and can't do anything worse, so... It's so funny. As we were discussing this piece that Lisa wrote, she said, oh, yeah, I wrote this like seven years ago. And I said, seven? I thought it was two. (laughs) And it's exactly what the story is about. And we need you to listen up because you are going to be telling other people about this. It's really insightful. It's universal, isn't it, that as we get older, time just goes so much faster. And We know the clock doesn't move any faster, but the perception of time moves faster, right? Mm Mm-hmm. It just feels like it's flying past us, and we're all working so hard to slow things down. So it really bugged me when this started happening, I don't know, seven years ago or something. So I did some research into it, and here's the thing. Your brain slows down. You know when you fall, Mm Erin, and it feels like it takes forever? Like when you fell in front of your garage. That was an early episode, and you were okay. But Right. Yeah, so it feels like it's happening in slow motion, like in frames, and yet you're powerless to stop it. It's because your brain is zoning in on something out of the ordinary. And so it takes more, think of it as a camera, it takes more picture frames of what's happening than when you're going through the same old routine. So this is why when we get older, we travel, we take up different hobbies, we try new things, because that makes our brain slow down. Almost exactly like taking frames of a film. And Mm. when you're doing something similar, it just speeds up and goes, oh yeah, I'm familiar with that. But when you're not, it's like you have to pay extra attention because your brain is going, is there danger here? I've got to watch out for danger. Is there something new here that I need to learn? I've got to make sure I take time and learn this. It's all the new different experiences that stand out because of this need, huh? It really is. So the reason why we see so many seniors and young seniors like us, who aren't even seniors, traveling and stuff is to load the memory banks with new experiences because that is slowing your brain down because it's not the same old, same old every day? Exactly. So there are only certain days for me, I don't know about for you, at work, for example, that really stick out. And they're usually the big disaster days when I was in news because Mm -hmm. 
it was something that was brand new, we were hyper-focused on and paying attention to, other than doing your job every day. Yeah. And it's the same kind of thing. So once we're retired or rewired or semi-rewired, we look for things that will make our brain slow down and take it in in more detail. That's what it is. And when you're a kid, I mean, everything's new. So right. when you're a kid, right. you know, uh, it's very different. Yeah. Oh, man. That is fascinating. Well, here's to making new memories. That's what our lives have become now. And we're going to do that, relocating. And I have to tell you, without a doubt, there is a room with your name on it. It'll be Lisa's room. Yay! I'll even share it with the grandkids if I have to. I mean, not <laughs> literally, but in name. Oh, they love their <laughs> Miss Lisa. And in fact, they listen to this podcast. Well, Colin does. He listens to it in his room on Spotify. Oh, that's so cool. Well, who else does he know who does a podcast, right? In real life. That's right. Yeah. 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 So on we go, on we go, as we uh, get set to say goodbye to April. And we just want to thank you again for your kindness, your support, and your feedback on this as well, from the emails to the posts at Gracefully and Frankly's Facebook page to rating the podcast. That matters so much because it gets to more listeners. So thanks for that. And we love the emails as well. We get them occasionally, and they're usually, they make our day. That's the only way to put it. It's Gracefully, Frank at gmail.com and we do appreciate that we do i appreciate you miss lisa and we will talk to you ooh, in may wow doesn't that fly <laughs> it does we need to make more memories <laughs>